Hi guys, so I want to just go over a few more examples with you for section 5.3, graphing general rational functions. So I'll review a little bit uh, the key concept box here with you, and then we'll just jump in and do three graphs of general rational functions, and then do example four, which is uh, an applied word problem of a general rational function. So uh, I just want to review with you quickly, um, if f of x is a rational function, the, the general form we call p of x the numerator polynomial and q of x the denominator polynomial. And of course they can look this complicated, but generally our polynomials are not that bad, but that's technically the definition, they can be very complicated. Uh, important things to remember again for us is that uh, this is the leading coefficient, a sub m, b sub n. We need to know how to find those. And also the degree of the numerator polynomial and the degree of the denominator polynomial, m and n. So basically, if you can find all those pieces of information in the provided function, then you can follow the set of steps given uh, in the textbook to graph the rational equation. Or the rational function. So uh, the first step is again find the x-intercepts by finding the real zeros of p of x. So that means take the top function and solve it for x and see what the real zeros are. Those are the x-intercepts. Uh, step two is the graph of f has a vertical asymptote uh, at each real zero of q of x. So again, real zero of q of x, you take the, the denominator function or polynomial uh, q of x, you solve that, and all the real zeros are vertical asymptotes. And then when it comes to horizontal asymptotes, step three, we have three cases. So you have to compare m and n, in other words, the powers of the uh, numerator polynomial and the denominator polynomial compare their powers and then you get three cases. If m is less than n, the line y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote. If m is equal to n, this line is the horizontal asymptote. And if m is greater to n, there is no horizontal asymptote, but the end behavior of the graph follows this line right here. Okay, so that's a little overview there of what we're going to use, the strategy we're going to use to graph uh, these functions. Let me clear all that stuff off the slide, and then uh, we can get into this. So we did example one in class. I think I'll do example 1a in class. I think I'll do example 1b with you. So let's look at example 1b, and that is a case when m is less than n. So <clears throat> let's look at this polynomial and make sure we can identify all the parts. So p of x is x minus 4. q of x is x squared minus 3x. Uh, that means from here I can say that m is 1. The degree of the numerator polynomial is 1 from here. And then I can say n is 2 because that's the degree of the denominator polynomial. And I can also say from this that uh, a sub m is 1. Uh, that's the leading coefficient. okay, And b sub n is also 1. That's the leading coefficient of the denominator function. So with that, I pretty much have all the information I need to go ahead and uh, do the follow the steps that were given to graph the polynomial function. I mean the polynomial function, sorry, the rational function. And so uh, let's. I'm just going to follow the steps in order. Again, I'll scroll back up here. The four, the three steps. Uh, step one: <coughs> find the x-intercepts. So I'm going to do that. Step one: the x-intercepts. And that step says take p of x and solve it for the real zeros. 
Okay, so x minus 4 equals 0, so I get x is 4. So that tells me I have an x-intercept at 4. Okay, so you can go right ahead and plot that. The x-intercept is 4. All right. Uh, <clears throat> that's step 1. Step 2. Step 2 said, let's go back up here. Step 2 said uh, the graph has a vertical asymptote at each real 0 of q of x. So I take uh, vertical asymptote. I'm trying to find the vertical asymptote. And that means take q of x uh, and set that equal to 0 and solve for the real zeros. So I get x squared minus 3x is 0. And if you factor this, you get x times x minus 3 is 0. And solving this, you get x is 0 or x is 3. So these are my two vertical asymptotes. This was my x-intercept, these are my two vertical asymptotes. x equals 0, x equals 3. So on your graph, just go ahead and graph that right away as you find them. Okay. So x equals 0, I'm going to graph it right here. And then x equals 3, right here. Okay, there's my two vertical asymptotes. Then step three uh, is find the horizontal asymptote. Okay, horizontal asymptote. And so the horizontal asymptote, it says, uh, you, for this, you have to go back to your little box that you should have had in your head. So we did step one, step two. Step three says, uh, if m is less than n, y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. All right, so we're looking for the horizontal asymptote. Uh, we have m, which is 1. That is less than n, which is 2. Uh, so we can say, so y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. Okay? y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. So if I go here and graph that, uh, here is the horizontal asymptote. <clears throat> OK. Now, uh, I have a bunch of stuff on my grid there, but that doesn't really help me to know what's going on with the exact way that the graph looks. So what you end up doing is adding another step to what the textbook tells you. Uh, the only other way to do this is to plot a whole range of points to find out the exact shape of the graph, but that will take really, really long. And um, at this point with the technology we have, it's kind of unnecessary. So uh, I'm going to add a step four here that's not part of their list, and that is a graph the function... on your calculator to see the shape, okay, to see the shape. So this is an approximation. We're not really graphing this exactly accurately. Uh, it's an approximation. It's an overall picture of what the function is doing. And this will let you get the idea of what's going on with the function. So we're going to do that. So uh, again, I, I have quite a bit of stuff on my grid there, but I can't really graph it unless I plot many, many, many points. So rather than do that, let's go and uh, just graph this on our calculator and see what it does. So if you go to your calculator, uh, just be careful with your parentheses. You want to enter it correctly. X minus 4 uh, divided by, and then you have X squared minus 3x. Okay, and if you graph that, let's see what zoom standard looks like for this one. Oh, zoom standard actually ends up showing me what I need to see, so that's fortunate. So with zoom standard I can see pretty much the shape of my function emerge and it makes a lot of sense. So I can see that uh, in the first quadrant or down over here on the left-hand side, uh, the function 
goes towards uh, infinity on in the x direction and then when it gets to the vertical asymptote at zero it goes towards infinity negative infinity sorry negative infinity in both cases in the y direction in this case and negative infinity this way in the x direction and so I'm going to go and draw this shape approximately on our grid um, and you will see you know that what we did actually worked so Basically, what we have is something like this. Uh, the function does this. It starts out here in negative infinity and then goes down towards negative infinity in the y direction. And then, uh, if you look back, I have that going on. So, basically, the graph is coming down, doing a little bit of a strange thing there, and coming back up. So, doing that. And if I look over here, the graph does cross the x-axis at the x-intercept, which is strange because this is also the horizontal asymptote. But this does happen occasionally that graphs cross horizontal asymptotes. So uh, we can draw that in. The graph does this, crosses, but then if you pay attention, you'll see that uh, the graph kind of hugs the horizontal asymptote and approaches it closely. Okay, And that's really enough. This is really all that we expect you to do to demonstrate that you can graph uh, a general rational function of this type. Right? That's enough. Your calculator helps you with overall shape. But you could then describe this pretty uh, uh, well with some domain and range, all kinds of other things you can do. So uh, that's, that's that for example 1b. All right? So I also did example 2a with you in class. So let's try example 2b together. And this is a different case. This talks about when m is equals to n. So when m is equals to n, sorry, when m is equals to n, that's a different type of graph. So what you get is um, same process, same steps, just step three, when you talk about the horizontal asymptote, something is slightly different. So uh, I'll do this again. We call this top polynomial p of x. We call the bottom one q of x, and this is 4x squared minus 21x plus 5. This one is x squared minus 12. And if I want to identify parts, I can see that uh, this is my m, this is my n, uh, this is a sub m, and 1 is b sub n, okay? So uh, maybe I should do that in a slightly different color so it's a bit more clear. Let me label these in different color. So uh, this is, uh, sorry, no, a, this is m, this is n, this is a sub m, and this number right here is b sub n, okay? And if you have all that, then you know really what to do. You have the steps, you have all the information you need. So I'm going to just go ahead and solve this using the same three steps, actually four steps we had before. So number one, find the x-intercepts. Okay, so when I find the x-intercepts, uh, you take the numerator function, p of x, you set it equals to zero and you solve it. So you get 4x squared minus 21x plus 5, set it equal to 0, and solve it. Okay, So if you get this function, this will stretch your factoring skills again. Um, but we've done this many, many, many times before. So this factors into 4x minus 1, x minus 5. This is our chapter 1 this year. Okay, And then if you solve this, you get x is a fourth, or x is 5. So there's your two x-intercepts. So you can draw those. x is a fourth, which if you zoom in a little bit here, x is a fourth is maybe there, and x is 5 is maybe over there. Okay, my two x-intercepts, and then step two. Step two is uh, find the vertical asymptote, and that means take q of x and set it equals to zero. So again, q of x is the denominator, which is x squared minus 12 equals 0. 
So if you do that, you get x squared equals 12, or x is approximately uh, plus minus 3.5. So if you, you're going to get a square root, but you really have to simplify that in your calculator to be able to graph it easily on your grid. So it's about plus minus 3.5. Um, the intermediate step here, let me go ahead and do that, was take the square root, you get root 12, which is the same as 2 root 3, something like that, and then you get about 3.5. Okay? And so this is my uh, two vertical asymptotes, two vertical asymptotes, uh, 3.5 either side, okay? 3.5 plus 3.5 minus 3.5. So negative 3.5 is about here, all right, and then positive 3.5 is about here, all right, and last question is, uh, what is the horizontal asymptote? So horizontal asymptote, now we have the case where m equals to n. So m is equals to 2 over here, which is equals to n, which is also 2, okay? Uh, um, excuse me, which is equals to n. So let's go back to that little box in the top that tells you what to do. When m equals to n, the line y equals a sub m over b sub n is a horizontal asymptote. So let's go back here and look at that. So y equals a sub m over b sub n is the horizontal asymptote. So our a sub m we said is 4 earlier, okay, from here. And we said our b sub n is 1 from here. So there we go. So my horizontal asymptote is 4, okay. So if you go to your grid and graph 4, you get this, all right. And now we want to graph the function. So if you go to your calculator, you will see something uh, similar happen again as in the previous question. Uh, let me clear this out, and we'll put this in here. And I think you might have to zoom a little bit to make this work. So let's see, 4x squared minus, let me see what I'm looking at, minus 21x, okay, plus 5, and then divide by x squared minus 12. Okay, and if you do that, uh, graph that, and let's try zoom standard, see what happens, but I don't know if that's going to work properly. Oh, it works fairly well, so let's zoom out a little bit. Let me zoom out from the center a little bit, and there you get the shape, you get the overall gist of what happens. So if we want to graph this, first of all, let's look at this region here. This does, uh, you know, starts at negative infinity in the x direction and goes up to positive infinity in the y direction. So we can do that, looks something like this, looks something like this, okay? And then uh, the middle of the graph starts from the bottom negative infinity, crosses through the asymptote, uh, the x-intercept, and actually will cross the horizontal asymptote and then goes up to a positive infinity. So it does something like this, okay? It does cross the horizontal asymptote again, and then uh, the next part of the function comes up, crosses the horizontal asymptote, crosses the x-axis at our x-intercept, and approaches the asymptote right there. So something like this. Uh, it's Again, it's approximation. If we want to have a very, very accurate graph, we would plot, plot tons of points. All right? Uh, I'm going to stop here, and then I'll pick up with... Uh, example 3b and 4 in another video.